Hey again, it's Egwin. Movement is a multi-layered process. What this means and what some of the implications of that are is content of this vlog. Now, we can talk about movement for a very long time because movement is something very central and it starts at our very foundation. To move from A to B is one aspect of movement, this locomotion aspect. We can do that in different ways. We can do that in handstand, we can do that on our feet, we can do that crawling on the floor or rolling on the floor, we can do that jumping, whatever. There are many, many, many different options to do so. Those big aspects are not the things I'm going to talk about in this video. I concern myself more for this video with the smaller aspects. What are the smaller aspects? Well, our cellular pulsation, for instance. That's one. It's not the first, but it's one of the more basic layers of our movement. Depending on the interconnectedness of our cellular structure, depending on the intercellular communication, movement changes. The basic principles on which every visible movement builds change completely. Thus, sometimes movement feels better than other times, or more free-flowing, and so on. But to work on a cellular level, in order to get rid of blockages and in order to free movement, needs a completely different approach than just simply change the movement system we are working with. That's one part of how one can change that, but still working on that level requires a different approach to be really thorough. Another level of movement is, I'm jumping between them, so there are more levels in between, but I, I don't want to go too deep into it right now, also because I want to keep the vlog neat and tight. So another level between the cellular and what we perceive as external movement is actually the point where our consciousness intersects with our muscles. And when we look at our consciousness in terms of a psychological point of view, where we say there is this conscious and the subconscious aspect, then we have different layers of muscle, literally, physically, anatomically, physiologically, that get more or less attention from the conscious and from the subconscious parts. Meaning, our subconscious programs, our subconscious mind, actually affects a different layer of muscle structure than our conscious mind. This is actually the reason why, for instance, if you're really pissed at someone and you want to punch that man, and in the end you do not do it, that's the point where the conscious regulates the subconscious. But the instant you get so fired up, you, know, you want to punch that other fellow, that instant it actually happens in your deep muscle layers. Your consciousness regulates and says, no, don't punch him. Maybe, maybe not. But if this regulation process takes place, then it says, no, don't, don't punch him. Maybe it's your boss and you don't want to lose the job. So there is a gap between what the subconscious triggers in your muscles and what your consciousness can trigger in your muscles, what your consciousness can do with your muscles. There are specific techniques where you can combine the subconscious muscles and the conscious muscles. 
it's not really that there are muscles that are only triggered, skeletal muscles that are only triggered by subconscious mind, but that are mainly triggered by subconscious mind. How else can I explain that? Think about the heart, for example. Your heart, you don't think about your heart. You don't think about, please pump, please pump, please pump. So that's definitely something that's more in the subconscious area. It's a complex neurological and bioelectrical aspect, why it pumps. But again, it takes a lot of practice to be able to actually influence your heartbeat. It's possible. It's absolutely learnable for everyone, but it's possible. And so that's another layer. So one basic layer is your cellular interaction. Whatever happens there changes the way you can perform. The next layer is how much tension, restriction do you have in your subconscious muscle layers, which in the skeletal area, so meaning in your extremities, most of the time are the muscles that are closer to the bones. And then you have your subconscious muscles, uh, your, sorry, your conscious muscles. And with those conscious parts, that's what you use in a normal, regular day when you move. That's what you use in your regular movement practice. Now, some movement practices, they obviously require the subconscious muscles to work as well. But it's much, much harder to train them. And most of your psychological profile of your psychological aspects are actually stored in the movement patterns that lie in the subconscious parts of your skeletal system. So those are just three of a lot more different layers where movement in the body happens and all those layers need a separate approach in order to be combined really in a complete holistic way. Regular movement obviously has an effect on all those because if I move this movement also triggers my cellular level and it has a positive effect on my cellular level as well. But to literally consciously work on it requires a separate approach. Want to go into those different approaches little more in detail in the near future. For now, to cut this video as short as possible, it's quite long already. Let me just stop here.